to start this podcast off, we want to say thank you to our Patreon members, our newest members, Michael Reyes, M. Joe G. 075, Paul Lavalli. And make sure you don't forget to like and subscribe for more. I wanted to, 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 to chime in on this. And, and, and when, when my son, when Jacob asked, you know, who, who was like the, the most difficult in terms of entourages, there were so many. You, you, you know, um, yeah. you yeah. said some, some I think uh, uh, Euglin said Wu-Tang. They, uh, yeah. they, weren't, they weren't as bad. I, I, um, Rough Riders was bad, you know. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. yeah and they, they that always was came in. I work for them also. Yeah, they came in the dozens, and then you had Zulu Nation, <laughs> you know, and they was a whole uh, uh, big with thing. African man. Bombada, yeah, yeah, with African, African Bombada, yeah. They and, have, but and, they have a big security team now. The Zulu Nation is really doing well uh, for themselves business wise. They held, they held on. They were it, no, it, but it, I'm talking about back in the days. I'm not talking about now. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, okay. he's talking about our personal experiences because right. as the years went on, these guys grew up and they 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 became entrepreneurs. They became, you know, smarter. You know, they weren't doing what they were doing when they were younger. You know, right. because you know when I started out, man, I remember when Zulu Nation just started. You know what I mean? I had a, a big altercation at with them at the Roxy's. I was telling you about the other night. Where um you know uh, uh the, the guy he, he, I don't want to get back into the story but you know but there there was so many you know I don't want to name all but but one the one the least one that I when I was working at the club I don't know if you guys remember Trafalgar Square which sure. was a horrible club in Sutton yeah. Boulevard in Queens and I was the head of security there um I thought we would have a problem with with uh, um. Uh, uh, Wu Tang, but they were really a lot of them were really cool dudes, man. I, I I remember that they were easy to talk to. A lot of them were martial artists. They were easy to talk to. Um, I remember KR was it KRS one? Yes. Yeah. 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 He was as a nice guy. He was a real yeah. nice guy. But wherever he went, the people that followed him was a bunch of dedicated idiots. I remember that. You know, but, you know, so it's hard to say what group they, you know, and, and, uh, you know, uh, thank God that they had guys like us that were there yeah. because a lot of times things you, you, all of us know would have got out of terribly out of hand. You know, yeah, we had our right. friends yeah. uh, killed because of some of these entourages, you know, um, yeah. I had a friend personally that, that was killed, uh, um, who was, a, a, a uncle to, to my children. You know, and um, he got shot 17 times at a club in um, Jamaica, Queens on Guy R. Brewer Boulevard. His name was Bourne. Yeah. And I pleaded with him, you know, um, not to get in any trouble because he was taking my place that night. And um, and uh, he didn't listen to me. And he got into a fight, man, and with a guy he knew from high school, shot him 17 times, emptied the gun on him, you know. But yeah. Uh, 17 well, times. That's, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a whole lot yeah, of I, times. Yeah. Empty the gun. Like he had to borrow somebody else's gun, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It was a nine millimeter, I believe. And um, um, I don't know how many bullets. I knew it was six between 16 and 70. It was a lot of bullets. He, and the, most of it hit his head. So, yeah. um, but, but by him, I, I, what I want to say is, it's really an honor having you on here, man. Um, you're man, a legend. It was an honor for me to be here, my brother. I, I really appreciate it. You know. Yeah, brother. We all feel the same way, right, guys? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. We, we, we got to get you back on again. We got to get you back on, okay. man. Yes, yes, and, sir. And, and, and uh, we want the people to know that the everybody we're bringing on here are thorough. Uh, uh, the ones we're bringing are martial artists. We're, we're not bringing too many of the bounces that's not martial artists, man, because um, this is a martial arts platform. You know, yes. so we want people to tune in and hear these real stories of these real heroes, man, that have done some real things, you know. Right. Anybody yeah. else want to say anything? Well, I, I did. You, you're, you're talking about uh, about Grandmaster Bahim Muhammad. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you did. You didn't know this, but he promoted me to fifth, sixth and seventh degree. I didn't know that. Yes. He, he wow. was the one who who had promoted me. My, my, I had been uh, promoted to fourth degree by Doc. And um, Grandmaster Bahi Muhammad promoted me to fifth, sixth, and seventh. Um, so I, I'm, I'm ever grateful for that. 
Um, and the people that don't know who that, Doc is talking about, Grandmaster uh, Moses Powell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Otherwise known as Doc. I just want to make that clear because a lot of people say, yeah. Doc, who's Doc? Because there's a couple of Docs <laughs> out right, there. Right, 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 right. Um, so we want to make that clear who he's talking and, about. You know, yeah. one other thing, because we always talk about like not doing like bouncers don't go to work thinking, oh, I'm going to kick somebody's ass. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put my hands on people. I'm going to try a new technique. Right. That's not what we're doing. We're looking to get paid. Go home, stay either warm or cool, because, you know, we either yeah. way, if it's hot out, we're, we're out there sweating. If it's if it's cold out, we're, we're layered up and we can't move around very well. Um, mm -hmm. And we just want to get home. We want we, a lot yeah. of times you want to yeah. we want to get off of work and go grab breakfast with our pals other bouncers mm -hmm. right. and then we want to get yeah. home to our families our mothers yeah. our fathers our children our wives our girlfriends our cousins we we want to you know and a lot of people don't yeah. understand that um yeah. and uh uh grandmaster bahi muhammad you know had worked for me on and off over the years um there was it, yeah. it, it's, it's a testament to his skill as a martial artist and and it honestly truly 100 billion percent happened we were working at a club. I wasn't even there. My head of security called me directly afterwards. And it was laughed about for, I don't know, five, six years later. Um, a guy comes in. It was a Jamaican club up in uh, like Fish Avenue somewhere in Fish Avenue in the Bronx. Yeah. Bronx, and, yeah. Right, in the Bronx. And these guys came in, blah, blah, blah. And one guy, went by because Grandmaster Bahi Muhammad used to search because he was so proficient at it. So he would search, and a, and a lot of the, the uh, Caribbean people, specifically this Jamaican guy, got really upset at him for, you know, searching around his groin area. So he starts, you know, calling him whatever whatever the term is, a faggot and gay. And so um, the head of security, Greg, goes, no, 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 brother, you got to go. You got to go. Because he knew if he stood there in front of Bahi, he was going to he was going to take a beating. So Greg <laughs> rushes him outside. And who's standing outside? Brother Bahi Muhammad waiting for him. Wait. Yes, Wait. sir. <laughs> so the guy sees the guy sees uh, Bahi and rushes him. Greg goes, "No!" He rushes Bahi. Shortly afterwards, and we're talking about moments. The guy yeah, before the funeral or after the funeral? No, no. The, he didn't make it to the <laughs> funeral. None of us went. Uh, the guy was lying on the floor, in his own blood, in a fetal position, crying, crying, going, uh, yes. "Not a big man. I's not a big man." And he had blood coming from his ears, his eyes, his nose, and his mouth. And We're his talking mouth. about seconds. Say again, sir. Yes. Yeah. I said, yeah, you're right. Right. And, and I remember all those areas I hit him with elbows. Well, Greg didn't yep. tell me what you hit him with. He just said that he was crying and couldn't. And then and then when the guy finally got ushered away, they had a, a like like always, you know, go get a bucket of water and you got to clean the front. You don't want blood lying out there. No. It's bad for patrons. Yes. It's bad for business. <laughs> well, I think it's fair to tell our audiences, our audience, that our job description was to protect drunk people from themselves. Yes. <laughs> that or us. Or, or, or us, right? Mainly from themselves, because they, after they got drunk, they get stupid and fight with each other. Then they run out of people to fight with and get mad at us because we tried to stop it. Right. Right, right. <laughs> so but that was our job description. If you don't mind me saying this before we go also, it's something very important also about being a bouncer. And that particular thing is, no matter how many techniques that you have, but you, you don't say you in the dojo and so far, if you don't have the heart to use it, then brother, it ain't no good. That's I would right. I choose a man to work with who has heart. Not a troublemaker who has heart, but you know, saying a man who can use his brain and he has heart, also. I mean, there's 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 a Muslim sister. You understand? I would that would bring on if I had ten guys behind me and I said, Let, "Let's go do this," and she show up. I tell those game, ten guys to go home. Look, oh, okay, man. Look, y'all can go home now. Relax, be with your family. She just showed up, you know, because it's very dangerous to work with a man who has no heart. Man. I mean, every man has some type of fear, you know, like this. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch Gunsmoke and uh, the, the marshal was going to fight a guy who had killed everybody. So one guy walked up to him and said, look, man, you, you're not afraid? And he said, look, a man is never afraid as a fool. And I always kept that in mind. Even though I was a kid, I kept that in mind. Everybody has a certain amount of fear, but 
you got to have courage with it also. So it's very dangerous, you know, working around people who just, you know, just, just want to, the, the friend just want to put them on for, for them to get a paycheck. Very dangerous. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, 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 everybody, we, we appreciate you. We have Brother Grandmaster Bahim Mohammed on tonight. It was an honor and a pleasure. Uh, we thank yes. you from the DOS magazine. And um, we're looking forward to, to having you back on as a guest. Please do. Okay. Please well, do. I appreciate that. I appreciate, I appreciate, you know, uh, my, my, my friend and brother, you understand, uh, Sheha Glenn Beck. You know, just want to say that too, man. I appreciate everything. But you know how we do. We know how we are. You know how, how I feel about you, man. You understand? You help me go home to my family. Yes, I yes, help sir. you go home to your family. That's that's important. Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. Fair. Appreciate you. Okay. Yes, on that note, we're going to say goodnight to our audience. And please stay tuned for the next episode. Yes, sir. Bodyguards yes, sir. and bounces. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Close.